Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and this right here is a supernova that I just created in Universe Sandbox Square. In today's video we're going to be talking about populations of stars and how these populations are defined and what they mean in the evolution of different stars and also in evolution of our universe. Today you're going to learn what it all means and how these stars are actually different. Welcome to What The Math. And we're going to start this simulation with yet another supernova, but this time in our solar system, which is unfortunately, or maybe fortunately, impossible because our sun is not big enough. But we're going to just see what happens as the supernova destroys all of the planets in our solar system. So, there is actually three types of stars. Three populations of stars. Population 1, population 2, and population 3, not in that order. As a matter of fact, in the opposite order. What does it all mean? Well... Back when the universe just began, which we're going to create right here, right now, by doing this. There were very likely a bunch of really, really massive stars and a bunch of really massive black holes that uh, essentially interacted with one another. Now, you can see in this particular simulation, I've placed uh, several supermassive stars up to about 100 or even 150 masses of our sun. And there is a supermassive black hole in the middle. All of this is going to interact with each other and create some really cool effects in a few minutes. Now, these right here are population three stars. These are the original stars, the progenitors of our universe and our galaxy. These stars only contain hydrogen in them. Maybe a little bit of helium, maybe some lithium, but for the most part, they just contain hydrogen. Uh, a lot of these stars will not live very long. They'll live less than um, 100 million years and they'll either explode in a supernova or turn into black holes or basically disappear in some way or another. And as they disappear, they'll release um, some of their material, they'll release their hydrogen, they'll release their helium, but they will also create a lot of supernova that will release other materials. And this will hopefully happen at some point here, as we're interacting with this supermassive black hole in the middle, uh, we might actually see one or two supernova occur. So let's actually run this for a little bit until something actually happens. And I think I may actually have to place a few more stars here for them to create a supernova because I didn't have enough in the beginning. So let's run this for, oh, here we go. Look at that. And here come the supernova. Now, within a few hundred million years, all of these population three stars will disappear and will create enough material, this stuff right here, to start creating population two stars. All right, so a few million years will pass and we'll see the first population two stars. Now, these will come in different colors and also in different um, compositions, but for the most part, once again, they will mostly have um, hydrogen and just a little bit of other materials in them. Their metallicity, their non-hydrogen and non-helium content is going to be very, very, very low. But these stars that are still in existence today are actually some of the oldest stars we've detected. Some of them are just almost as old as our universe, um, over 13 billion years old, and we know quite a few of them already by studying um, them in our telescopes. Now, for the most part, all of these stars were formed early on um, in the formation of the galaxy and the universe, and uh, they were formed from the remains of population three stars. So all of the population three stars we think are completely gone. We actually haven't seen any of them. We have never seen them ever. We may have detected them in one of the uh, farthest galaxies known as um, Cosmos Redshift 7, uh, but it's still a speculation and we're not sure if they exist, but we do know that these guys, population two stars, are everywhere and uh, they are the oldest stars we know today. And these stars are usually metal poor, meaning that, once again, they only contain hydrogen and helium, and um, all of these stars are predominant in older galaxies as well. Like for example, elliptical galaxies will often have more of these stars, not the other type, which is population one. And uh, you can usually find these stars or more often find these stars in globular clusters around our um, galaxy, but also in the 
center of the galaxy as well. So because they're so old, they'll usually be closer to the center of the galaxy. So this is where there's quite um, a lot less metallicity and quite a lot more um, hydrogen and helium, not so much other materials. All right, so that's population two. Now, interestingly, we also think that uh, there isn't that many planets around them. As I mentioned in one of the previous videos, metallicity of a star does uh, define whether they'll have planets. Because uh, this star will mostly contain hydrogen and helium, it's very unlikely that it's actually going to have any planets orbiting around it. It might actually have one or two, but there's a very, very high chance that these planets will either be completely made up of uh, gases or be very, very small or might not actually exist at all. And so that's population two stars, stars that are quite interesting, are everywhere. They've also created pretty much all of the non-hydrogen, non-helium materials in our solar system. And they did this the following way. They basically went supernova, which we're going to create here right now by exploding all of these stars. And all of, all of these supernova, because of the extreme interaction of matter when the supernova occurs, will create tremendous amounts of various non-hydrogen, non-helium materials, such as oxygen, silicates, um, carbon, and so on and so forth. So, everything in our body, for the most part, or the vast majority of things in our body have been created from one of these things, from a supernova of a population two star that exploded about five billion years ago, somewhere in the vicinity of, well, where sun was born. And then from all of this material, our beautiful sun was born, along with, of course, all of the planets and all of the moons and all of the other stuff that I've just placed um, around our sun. So, our planet Earth, which for the most part contains a lot of water, a lot of silicates, a lot of iron, a lot of non-hydrogen and non-helium stuff, was actually almost entirely created from a population two-star supernova. So, all of this material that we have, including, of course, everything inside of you, with the exception of hydrogen, um, was actually made from a huge supernova, which kind of makes you think, right? You know that uh, iron in your blood that allows you to breathe oxygen? All of this was a result of a tremendously powerful supernova about 5 billion years ago. And so now we come to the most important stars, that, the stars that we're interested in, because usually they'll be the ones with the um, actual planets around them. The stars with high metallicity, and these are the population one stars. Uh, so quite a lot of population one stars can be found in Universe Sandbox by going to the simulation known as the nearest 400 stars. And pretty much every star you see here is a population one star because they're located close to our sun. They're located in the galactic arm where usually population one stars are located. And all of them will have relatively high metallicity compared to population two stars. And so younger galaxies, galaxies that are still undergoing formation will often have a lot of activity going on, a lot of new stars being created, and of course, a lot of population one stars as well. But everything you see here, everything in the vicinity, for the most part, is population one stars that very likely will have planets around them and uh, some kind of potentially habitable worlds for us to explore and to visit in the future. And so, well, that's essentially it. Population one, population two, population three stars that we can kind of summarize in the following picture. And so here are three stars. This right here is a population three star, a super, super massive star that only existed for a few million years and then exploded and disappeared. Its entire composition is essentially hydrogen. The next one here is a population two star and uh, this will be probably a lot less massive. And these are still around there. These are the oldest stars. And what makes them different is that they will probably not be as massive. They'll probably survive a lot longer. And most importantly, even though they do have um, slightly higher metallicity, their metallicity is still very, very low, close to about 99.9999%. Uh, In other words, they barely contain anything except for hydrogen and helium. And lastly, we have population one stars, which will often contain quite a lot of non-helium, non-hydrogen, up to about two or maybe even 3% of the mass. And these are the stars that will probably contain planets and contain maybe even life. And so that's essentially star populations in a nutshell. 
Now, hopefully you learned something from this video and hopefully now you know a little bit more about how stars were formed and what different population stars mean. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe and potentially share this video with someone who loves watching space videos, wants to learn through video games, and maybe likes to watch people play video games as well. Anyway, come back here tomorrow. You're going to learn something else, something different, something interesting. I'll see you tomorrow. Space out. And as always, bye-bye. Now, for some unknown reason, I've created a very unusual effect. It's a black hole covered by a blue halo. Maybe it's a bug. Maybe it's a, some sort of special feature that I've just discovered. That is absolutely awesome. Anyway, see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.